we don't just say, oh, you have uh, 20 tons of it. Yes, please give it all to us. So whatever that we do in tech cycle is what else can we do with our waste, our byproducts? Today, we are going to talk about something different, right? And we have a special guest with us today. He is the group CEO of Tech Cycle Technology, Berhad. Thank you so much man, for inviting. It's been so long, eh? haven't met you. Yeah, so <laughs> we have known each other for quite a while now and thanks for saying yes to coming on our no show. No problem, thank you so much. For context, Tech Cycle Technology, even though the company has the word technology in it, but it is not the typical technology company that you guys are thinking of. These guys, they are into waste business. So, bluntly speaking, you're a rubbish company. Yes, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah. We, we have that all over our faces. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but jokes aside, even when I'm talking about waste, you are managing a different kinds of waste. Can yeah. you share with us, what do you actually do? Okay, so to begin with, the name itself is Tech Cycle because of textile recycling. The company started off as a recycling facility since 1984 for 39 years, focusing on the cleaning of racks and textile. So what essentially the company does at the start itself is we look at cleaning services. So for instance, those days, printing industries were the in thing and you have machineries, you have a lot of things to clean. So you get contaminated with diesel, with grease, oil. So at that time, what people used to do, or even at the moment is you clean and you dispose it off. But what we were trying to do at that point in time was to do for our concept, reuse, reduce, recycle, recover. And the concept was a rental scheme where we give you racks and you know it's uh, for cleaning services and it gets cleaned for several rounds and we take care of the oil, the water is then being reused. So that was the model of tech cycle. In short, you can say that we are a laundry business, but for the industrial side. So we don't go to household, but it's more on the industrial ways, you know. Where now people talk about ESG, so this has been there since 39 years ago, the ESG concept that Tech Cycle has been doing. But apart from that, where we started off with all these cleaning services, we also have cleaning of drums, where people come with contaminated drums and it's uh, filled with uh, elements that are hazardous, so we clean the drums and, and that is another model that we have. Over the years, we have expanded. So basically, we are a slightly different kind of waste company. So we focus on scheduled waste. So there's two parts into the industry. One is scheduled waste, the other part is uh, solid waste. And when you speak about scheduled waste, it's, uh, basically is the hazardous waste, industrial waste. Solid waste is municipal. So mm. we're talking about household waste and stuff. So for us, we are more specialized in terms of the industrial waste. And that is why it's all governed by the Department of Environment. And we have 31 waste codes out of the 77 in the market. So it comprises, of course, our core waste till today, which is one of our biggest contributor, is basically the uh, RAX, which is uh, SW410. So they're all different numbers, and it starts from the series 1 to 5. And we have 31. So coming back again, so we have the RAX, we have oil and gas waste, we have also wastewater, we have contaminated soil, contaminated activated carbon, or you call it spent activated carbon. We have fluorescent light bulbs to recycle, mixture of scheduled waste, even rubber, glue, latex, all of this we collect. So we have like 6,000 over customers spanning over the Semenanjung of Malaysia and as well as Sabah and Sarawak. And we have uh, 284,000 tons of waste that we are licensed to collect. And all these are regulated because even our drivers, you know, they all got to be registered with the uh, Department of Environment, in short DOE, and it's not an easy business to do. So whatever that we do in Tech Cycle is what else can we do with our waste, our byproducts? So just now you mentioned that you have 6,000 customers across the whole Semenanjung yes. Malaysia and in fact Sabah Sarawak as well. And you are managing 31 waste code out of the 77 waste code. And I would presume that most of the industries are your customers. So it's very easy for you to pinpoint which industries are actually booming currently because you would be collecting exactly. more waste from that, right? But what I'm coming to is that 2023 is not exactly a fantastic year for a lot of industry, but yet your share price have grown 63% year to date. So what created that excitement on TechCycle? Over the years, there's been a lot of uh, things that has been happening. And I would say that there were a lot of things that even happened in the company. You know, we we're trying to expand. Because like I said, we are not just into waste. We also have renewable energy, where we've gone into biomass to energy, biogas, solar. And we have ventured into, now reason one is compost. 
So we're producing food waste into compost. So to wait, wait, wait. But food yeah. waste is not a scheduled waste. Yes. Right? Food waste is a solid waste. Correct. So how does that fit into your business? So now, so like I said, we were focusing on scheduled waste, and there's two sides, right? So scheduled right. waste and solid waste. Right. So we then decided, since we are already having the face of a rubbish guy and everything's rubbish, might as well take everything as well. So mm. the new plan, the new direction is we are going into even solid waste, basically municipal waste, to see how else we can, you know, contribute. Because ESG is not just in industrial, it's also into the household, you know, so why limit ourselves? And also, of course, the excitement, I would say, could be, which is there was a change of uh, shareholder and, uh, you know, knowing the background of our shareholders, where they have come in and they have, you know, a lot of experience in terms of the way that they have run their other businesses and all. That was one driver as well. That. But of course, you know, in 2023, to be quite precise, there were a lot of approach done by the government, especially the uh, NETR, all of those uh, energy transition roadmap and stuff. So with that, we have been approached by a lot of players, you know, to be playing a pivotal role in all of these green initiatives. We then tried to, you know, stand out because we've been around for many years. And this year particularly is because there was a lot of emphasis and we have been making a lot of, uh, I would say, a bit more branding, especially with a new set of direction from the new uh, shareholders. So a bit more dynamic, more aggressive. So where we are trying to, you know, head towards being one of the pioneer leaders in terms of ESG. So I would say that would be one of it that probably contributed to the share prices. Speaking of the new shareholders, I think it came from the corporate exercise where Ken Cycles and Remberhart, which is the controlling shareholder at that point in time, they disposed of, I think, 80 million shares to two individuals. Yep. One is Mr. K. Chuan Seng and the other one is Mr. Lee Haiping. Yep. Can you share more information about these two individuals? Sure, sure. Yeah. Based on the announcements, so they have come in officially in the office, so it's end of April. April this year, right? Yeah, this year, yeah. So Mr. Lee Haiping is basically the executive director and the chairman is Dr. K. Chuan Singh. Mm -hmm. So he is our chairman uh, of TechCycle. So Dr. K. Chuan Singh comes from Fraser Group, so where he's uh, got vast experience in the property development side and he's got base in Japan, a lot of other businesses where he was involved. And Mr. Lee Haiping was the ex-CFO and executive director of Chin Hin Group. Mm. And also property related. Also property related. Mm. And he was quite instrumental in terms of the development of Solar West as well, right. uh, where he was as well there. And with both Dato K. Chuan Singh and Mr. Lee, they come from a point of high-level corporate thinking and how do we place a direction for tech cycle. So as soon as they came in, I think they have set quite a good platform or a base for us to start. So the direction was quite clear, so we know where we are heading. And it's good that you know we have a clear direction. It is a firm thing and it's easy for our management to work on that. And having said that, Dato K. Chuan Singh and Mr. Lee Haiping have been instrumental in terms of bringing in new clients or new contacts, especially with growing our business. The whole agenda with them buying in is, first of all, is ESG. And Tech Cycle has got a very strong balance sheet to see from all results and all. And with that, there's a lot of room to grow. There were a lot of properties that we have not revalued over the years. There are a lot of businesses that we can bring in. Uh, as I said, we are 284,000 tons capacity, but we are only at 10% of our 10 utilization. utilization. So we, oh, we wow. have a lot of headroom to grow. Yeah. And with that, that's what we are doing now, you know, to push it to the next level. That is why we are also set up in Sabah, taking care of the oil and gas waste directly in Sabah. Why don't you just ship the waste over from Sabah Sarawak back to the plant in Klang? Okay, so, so basically transport costs. That's the biggest killer. Shipping costs can at times be more expensive than the treatment costs. So people are paying for transportation rather than treatment. So what we're saying is you can save that money. We come in and we will manage the plant as well. And we will take waste from the customers mm. rather than them sending it over to say tech cycle here in containers, which we do have now to take care of all the waste in Sabah. But of course, the primary goal is to take care of the oil and gas waste. But based on my understanding, the license that DOE gives to you yep. is to the site itself. Correct. It's not to the company. So Tech Cycle doesn't have the license, but the plant has the license. And that's one of the reasons why most of the waste has to be transported to this site. And I also understand that it takes years for yep. you to get the license. Correct. Now you're saying that you're going into Sabah. Yep. It 
kind of feels like you need to do everything all over again to start a new business over there. Yep. And it's going to take a long time for you to set it up. Yeah. Is that the case or is there a way for you to fast track the process? So, I mean, like, as I said at the start as well, you know, it takes years. But we saw the potential there and we have started this since 2020 actually mm -hmm. and 2021 with all the stocks and we have got approvals. So we, in fact, will make the necessary announcements when it comes. So we are already quite in the phase of construction. We'll be starting sometime next year. Mm. So, and of course, the target will be, you know, as soon as we can get it up, which we will announce in our prospects soon. But I think where we are coming from is that here, Tech Cycle in Telogong, in Klang, where we are, will still carry on. There is still a lot of waste here in Semenanjung that we are still getting it. But you see, in Sabah, right, there is a huge volume of oil and gas waste. And to set up there, although it takes time, but we have a strong partner there. So we have a joint venture partner, Evolusi Synergy. So they are a Sabah company and uh, they are quite big in the marine and oil and gas. So we are using the strengths and to make whatever necessary, I would say, marketing and to bring in potential investors or even new clients. And also because the Sabah state it has given us the land. So basically, Sabah Oil and Gas uh, Development Corporation, which is uh, in short SOGDC, they are basically our landlords. And we are based in Sepitang Oil and Gas Park, where that place, right, is not just for the existing waste, but it's going to be for future developments. You have seen the news which was announced, the, the Chief Minister in Sabah, where they said that there's going to be huge investment coming in into Sogib, which is the name of the place. And uh, there's going to be a lot of oil and gas terminals coming up there. So that's where we are, you know, basically heading to. But we know that there is a good base to be. Can I say this site is kind of like the Pengarang of Sabah in the future? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of that, is Pengarang clients, your clients as well, in Semenanjung? So we do have some some clients, you know, from Pengarang side and all. Mm. But it's, uh, you know, because it's shared upon with uh, many other players as well, as part of that 6,000 customers and all. Yeah, but it's, you know, not the volume that we intend to get. Is right, because your biggest volume still comes from the rack. And yes, the, correct. The, yeah, yeah, stuff correct, right yeah. And can, can you share with us roughly when this Sabah plant is going to be operational? For our internal timeline, mm. so we were looking at uh, sometime early 2025. So that would be something that we are looking at. So that's a potential catalyst for the yes, company yes. from 2025 onwards. Correct, correct. Coming back to your Clang plant, right? Just now you mentioned you have 284,000 tons of capacity, but currently it's only 10% utilised. I think one of the biggest issues is because while people are supposed to dispose their waste responsibly, I guess there are still a lot of SMEs and all that, you know, when they have all these contaminated industrial waste, yep. they still tend to just throw it in the normal rubbish bin. And I think this is not an issue that can be solved overnight. What does TechCycle as a company and as an industry player try to educate and encourage them or maybe talk to government agencies to try to get these people to be on board as well on this ESG journey and be more compliant to disposing waste more responsibly? Coming back to the board composition, so with the new insertion of the independent directors, executive directors, so we see a lot of strength in terms of you know speaking to government agencies and we want to create awareness to the public. Uh, we have been approached by even the Department of Environment you know, to be a sort of a key player or be their eyes in terms of you know helping them you know to stop clients from disposing it wrongfully which came out in the news many times you know and the reason given was why should i pay you know sometimes it's like if it's free i'll just probably just dump it next door or in the drain or whatever which could you know be something that has been happening all this while and of course like what you mentioned is how else are we helping so for instance consulting so we even consult our customers in terms of what else can they do so not just we love to get waste you know we get paid more but what we also do is to give added value services, like for instance, how can you reduce the waste at your site? Everything to tech cycle, right? Which will be happy. But what else can we do to reduce your waste? And that's one way where a lot of players are very happy as well. We don't just say, oh, you have uh, 20 tons of waste. Yes, please give it all to us. But we say, probably you can, you know, find ways to how else you improvise. Of course, everything has to be regulated. They got to get DOE approval and all. But we tried our best to help them to reuse, you know, sometimes there are products that are reusable, you know, it's not really waste. But of course, all that you got to get approval, maybe from Serum, from DOE and all. And if you can reuse, right, that's a good thing. I mean, it's the modus operandi of tech cycle anyway. So I think that would be another way that we are trying to encourage people, you know, to change 
it's not easy, like you said, it will take time. But I have to say, and we have to compliment the Department of Environment, they've been doing quite a good job now. A lot of enforcement to spearhead and with the ministers in charge, everything is really moving in terms of, you can see the trend. So that as you can see, although it's not really a good year, but why people are coming because of ESG and a lot of enforcement. So, you know, you're forced to, you know, dispose it off in a legal manner to people like us. So that's when, you know, we see a lot of uh, increase in terms of our ways and all. Uh, and of course, partially is due to the pandemic where, you know, a lot of things slow down and now things are picking up as well. Speaking yeah. of enforcement, how often do all these enforcement officers go and do audits? It's almost every day. I mean, it's... Uh, almost every day. Every day they're out to, you know, to check because there are always complaints, you know, uh, neighbours can call and complain, oh, you know, this and that. But when I say enforcement, is not on uh, anything but all over the country. So anybody, even clients or waste generators, I would say, are all being monitored. And they, all these are really done quite rigorously, like, you know, because they are looking for the environment protection. So which is a good move because otherwise, if no one looks at it, right, then people tend to do the easy way out. Right, so for all the SME players out there, if you don't want enforcement officers to come knocking at your door, this is the guy to look yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the waste guys, <laughs> correct. So say for example, a SME player and they want to dispose of their waste properly. Apart from yourself, very seldom I heard of other companies that actually are in industrial waste business. Can you roughly guess how many players are there in total in Malaysia currently doing your business? It's all actually in the DOE website. Mm. So they have from players that are doing just off-site storage, meaning just storing of waste, and to the recycling, recovery, and incineration and all. So they're all like different kettle of fish. Everything is different. And in total, if I'm not wrong, so it's uh, about 200 plus kind of players out there. They range from huge ones to small ones. Okay. So do you consider yourself the huge one or the small one? 284,000 From tons. what we have gathered so far in the market, so we can say probably the top five in terms of this industry. In terms of recycling, then probably one of the top ones as well mm. because there are not many players doing uh, recovery and recycling. Yeah, and uh, how much market share does all these top five players hold in the market? I'm not sure the latest one, but from what our study internally done, so we are, the top five probably holds about 20% of the, the market share. So then there are other players. So that is why we sometimes the players that we are there, we tend to uh, also wonder where all the waste goes, you know, because we are the top five, but you know, not sure what exactly else. Exactly, that's the case, right? Because you are one of the top five and you only have 10% utilization. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Where are all these ways yeah. gone to? And right? that 80% is not based on the full waste that is out there in the market. Mm. So there's a huge ton of waste and what we get is only a fraction. So usually that's where we tend to, you know, feel where does it go to. That's but a huge potential for you to grow into a big company. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's where we're looking at, you know, there's so much of room and we want to work together. So that's how we are now changing our direction as well, where we are looking to collaborate with more players in the market, see how we can work together as partners rather than looking as competitors. Let's work together because there are some expertise that we have or even the other player has, let's combine. Of course, we're not sharing secret recipes, but a way to move forward because by just a few months coming together, right, will make things work even better. And, you know, although we're a listed company, we said let's go into even private companies, let's work together, see how we can even move faster in, in terms of schedule ways. One thing interesting about Tech Cycle, right, while we keep talking about Malaysia's ways and stuff like that, you don't confine yourself to just Malaysia business. You also venture into overseas waste management as well. Yeah. I think in 2019, you have this partnership with a UK company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can share with us, what do you guys do over there? So basically in the UK, so we, the plan that we had was to work on uh, medical waste treatment as well as refuse derived fuel waste management as well. So we, we intend to even do a waste to energy plan. And of course, we were working on the licenses and all. We intend to come back to our core business, which is here in, in Malaysia, focus back you know, to where we do well. And uh, once we establish and you know, get bigger, like I said, we're only at 10%. So low let's hanging do fruit. More, low there hanging are a lot fruit. of things for you to do yeah, here. So in the UK, you know, with the currency and everything, we might as well we work something here for our own country. You know, whatever that we have here in Malaysia, I think there's ample of things that we can do for our own country. You know? yeah, so that's where we try to come back and focus on uh, Tana Air Kula. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> 
before I let you go, there's something that I noticed and I hope you can help me to answer. So this is an extract from your 2022 annual report. And as you can see over here, the revenue is dropping since 2018 from 37 million all the way down to about 21 million in 2022. But what surprised me is your profit. Your profit after tax grew from 7.7 .7 million in 2018 to 9.7 despite the drop in revenue. What happened over there? So revenue will definitely fluctuate mm. and we had a big impact in uh, during the pandemic in 2020 but it started to come back up in 2022-2023 but the good thing is that during the pandemic we still could survive although there was you know a certain month that we couldn't operate due to the essential services and all those things that we were getting sorted but what we have been doing is cost optimization you know a way to look at things how else we can improvise and how do you do that is also to look at waste. We, are, we were very selective of the type of waste that we were You only do high margin waste business? Uh, I mean the ones that you know can complement each other. Okay. So for instance, waste A and waste B can be combined together to process it. Because at that point in time, you know, imagine you are short of workers and then you are also looking at the pandemic where it was still, you know, still COVID was still there when you need to manage it properly. And at the same time, focusing on a core waste that we're looking at, which is the RECS business and whatever they could come in uh, was there, you know. And why the profits have been going up also, partially there was also like revaluation gain and stuff that was there. But on a long run, if you look at it, even if you remove it, it was going up because of the way we were managing it. Otherwise, it would be tough, you know, to, to manage in that kind of a situation. But now we managed to overcome most of it and that is why we can see our performance over the past three quarters and all. And we are hoping to do even more in the next year. Can you point out what is the most exciting thing for Tech Cycle 2024? So we are looking at organic growth, you know, to grow our utilization rate to more than 10%, to hit as much as we can with Sabah coming in with a lot of projects that we have. Secondly is MA, mergers and acquisitions. Merger and acquisition yep. 2024. Yes. And what kind of companies are you looking at? So uh, in fact, just to share, we just did one. We just acquired a company called Ground Control, so uh, for a major stake. So that company is doing converting food waste into compost. So we look at that as a good potential to grow, especially in the solid waste side. So we were quite happy. It actually was a good uh, stepping stone where we entered into the solid waste side. And of course, the other companies that we're looking at are in the scheduled waste side, where we are acquiring similar players like us who have uh, probably waste codes that we don't have. So we, we are already talking to a few parties. And uh, once that comes out, we you know we'll definitely announce. Okay. Uh, so last but not least, thank you for helping me to clarify this. But um, if I were to ask you to draw your revenue breakdown of Tech Cycle today, how would it look like? This one can draw one. Uh. Can draw one. So draw here. Yeah. So we have schedule waste and renewable energy. 15% on renewable energy and the remaining 5% on compost. Uh, and uh, let's say three years down the road, is this pie chart going to look the same or would it change a little bit? Uh, it would change. Yeah, It would be change. In, so so it, where would be the focus? So our in focus the next three years? would be, like I said, on schedule waste we mean, but we expect the compost side to grow even bigger than the renewable energy side. So oh, we, okay. Yeah. And probably this percentage may drop slightly, but... I think with the Sabah project that's coming in and with acquisition of companies, this would probably be uh, you know, still the major bulk of the business. So, all right. Thank you very much, Gary. Thanks for your time once again. Uh, I hope all the best. TechCycle is always a very interesting company to me. Uh, I mean, I've been following you guys for a while now. Uh, hopefully, next time I can get you back on the show and give us more updates about TechCycle. Thank you so much for having me on the show.